つに平成の迷ってた目の前がぼやけてく今数秒前はどこにらむ渦の中この音とすらもろく聞こえないなわからないんだため息を一つ吐いた目が覚めたようで名前で遠くから隠し捨てたと天下一丁の空に溶けてゆくだけ All right, hello everybody. Welcome back to USC 2023. We are here with Pennsylvania, Tennessee, second last match of the weekend, assuming you don't count the ongoing one in the B stream, Maryland uh, versus Georgia, currently 2-0 for Maryland. But we have got a match of our own. I am iFlame, uh, joined by no one for the time being. Might get uh, someone else in here for in a little bit. Uh, but for now, it's just me for these uh, these warm-ups. My favorite part of USC, as you all know. These teams are very, very different. Very, very uh, opposed skill sets. And so it's going to be pretty basic uh, start to the match with teams having pretty clear plays. And uh, welcome, Chillier, to, to the oh. match. <laughs> You're here. I, I, forgot. <laughs> I, was, I was like, I was watching the the vods that just got uploaded for the matches this weekend, and was like, oh, I got, I got time. I didn't have time. <laughs> yeah. Oh. As a as a punishment, you have to commentate over the entirety of warm ups. I'm just gonna I, be quiet. No, I, I won't do that to you. <laughs> I'm gonna do this. You know what? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm commentating oh, no. all of this. I can't let you do that to yourself, Shillier. It's not worth it. I must. I must. This would be a banger uh, warm up to commentate. It would. Right? We can. Uh, we can take the Harry Potter quiz live on uh, live on stream during warm ups. 
Oof, I would not do well on that, <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> I would. I, isn't there one where you just like uh, find out which house you are? I don't think you can fail that one, you know? <laughs> yeah, seriously. Oh, what do what do we uh what do we talk about while this absolute amazing warm up is on? I don't even know if this is the warm up. It's not even loaded into the client. This is just the default song. This is like the most go to default song we could have ever gotten. Yeah, we do got the rules first, and they're gonna decide a pick and ban order before they get to the warm ups. Ten versus ten, as Rob calls this match. Hmm. A great name for a match. That is pretty. Ten versus ten. Oh my goodness! This is uh, for for those of you watching. Uh, if you've ever been to one of our, uh, you know, three four UTC uh, plus streams, this is uh, this is USC after dark. We're uh, we're quite a bit more casual here after the the dinner time hours on the stream. Exactly. Um... Anything, anything goes in the uh, After Dark USC, and we've got very, very standard first pick, second ban. I guess we can go over the teams. Uh, Pennsylvania, them, U Empress, Bunny Like Money, Danini, Sunwraith, Astrovia, and Lulzep. Very, very strong uh, reading hidden team. Have looked really, really good. Uh, not only last week, where they had a ton of really high scores, but uh, was it yesterday in their match? I think I commentated it. And they just put up some really, really crazy scores across the board. It's going to be a tough one for Tennessee. Yeah, this is uh, this is the uphill battle for them, I think. You know, regardless of whether or not they are the lower-seeded team, Pennsylvania has a lot of players that scale quite well in these uh, pools, especially on mechanics. And there's an okay amount of mechanics in these pools if you ban out some of the, the weird gimmicky stuff. Um, or even hidden picks, especially like all things styled maps that Code is very good at. But Tennessee also does have some, you know, some solid all round mechanics players too. Sir has been a massive player for them on hard rock maps. And I, I imagine they will continue with that this week. Yep. Rest of the Tennessee lineup includes uh, Suicune, Coda, Fear You, uh, Dempsey, and Zataco. And this is, uh, you know, the antithesis of uh, Pennsylvania so far this tournament. Uh, they've just banned out. Uh, what are they talking about? They have just avoided speed at uh, all costs and uh, picked the reading map. So, you know. I'm alright with this. I'm okay with this. It's like a. Uh... I don't know. I don't know. I feel like that we've had some we've had some very uh, polarizing matches this weekend. There have been quite a few instances of like one team is very good at one skill set and another team cannot even touch that skill set and vice versa. And I don't know if this match is actually going to be any different. I used to know a guy a long time ago who's uh, I don't even remember the game anymore. His name was Ventress, and I keep wanting to call you Ventress. Ventress, it's a real struggle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you there, honestly. <laughs> I would love to see uh, like a match between the two and just see how many times it's like messed up. Also, this map just freaking picked up. What just happened? This just became a whole different kind of map, and Ventress is actually gaming. Oh, not anymore. Yeah, this is the uh, every week Pennsylvania warm up. Uh, you know, I've uh, gone over the uh, the warm up Pennsylvania warm up lore in their last two matches. Uh, if you're really interested, go go watch the vods. <laughs> <laughs> the vods are all there. Yeah, please please keep a lookout for those vods. And if you're in the server, the vod announcements channel has them all listed and labeled now. Good check. Sponsored by our own VODs. Sponsored by uh, Leishifri, our, our UNG slash Khabib channel uh, upgrade. Hey, where did that name come from in the first place, anyways? We don't know. That's okay. I don't know. I don't actually know. I don't, I don't <laughs> actually think I... Fair enough. And uh, that's it for the Pennsylvania warm-up, uh, which means we've got a whole nother warm-up. Yay! My happiness is <laughs> so large. Mm. So much happiness. I think the secret is to just not have happiness in the first place. You know? You can't go wrong. 
I don't know. I, I've got to have happiness. We won our we won both of our matches this weekend. So I'm like I'm kind of I'm flying high a bit here. That's you very true. Make it through quarterfinals. You you are legally obliged to be happy. And I think you guys are up against Texas in the next round. I am no longer happy. <laughs> <laughs> I think we, we we very much know what we're getting into uh, next weekend. So we'll, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. I don't know. Maybe we'll just get a full mechanics pool and Dada will stop picking gimmick entirely. Thanks, Dada. Appreciate it. Nudge, nudge. Wink, wink, hint, hint. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dada. Uh, Dada can't be stopped, okay? He cannot, honestly. He, you know, he, he creates his own path, and that's... I respect it. Someone has to do it. It's a nice uh, change up from your very standard, uh, you know, same pool every single tournament. Oh, you know, this Nomad 2 is 10 higher BPM than the last one. How wild is that? But uh, not in USC. <laughs> Trying to... Uh coordinate things in the meantime of the warm-ups right now. Um, well, you know, you can coordinate things to uh, duck sounds, I guess. I like this. This is great. This is actually one of the picks of all time. Yeah. Honestly, I think if they don't have the lo-fi girl in the background for this map, as a missed opportunity. I think it is. You know what? I agree with you. I... Oh, God. It's getting more crunchy. Oh, God. <laughs> it's getting worse. <laughs> I don't know what is happening at this point anymore. I don't either. The map just gets better and better as it goes on. better <laughs> yeah this is mu music to my ears <laughs> oh, the background too oh my this gosh practically beethoven trailer practic honestly this is this is modern day symphonic music absolutely I don't think anything needs to be said for this warm-up. Let's just uh, let the warm-up speak for itself. I'm letting it speak for itself. Very important. Very, very important. This is must-watch content. Maybe that's the strat. Maybe Tennessee is playing this map all on 0% volume, and Pennsylvania is just getting obliterated right now. This is, this is just so sad for them. <laughs> so tragic. I don't like this. <laughs> Uh, over in the B stream, I think Maryland is possibly about to be up four to nothing, and Dang. they're gonna have to play again uh, to later tonight later at three tonight? UTC. Yeah, I think we're commentating that. I think that's yes, we are. That's us. <laughs> uh oh. Oh my gosh, this map. Yeah, things get. Oh, uh... this is too long. <laughs> Listen, things get even darker once you get to uh, the three U2C matches. It's going to be a good time. I'm like, uh, I I've actually given up on commentating this warm up, and I have uh, continued designing the four digit World Cup badge. I mean, there's, right there's nothing to be said. There's I nothing. You could uh, take some inspiration from these sliders, perhaps. My gosh, it's over. It's done. We are, we made it. 
And uh, you know, look at the lobby. They this is all intentional. It's D for duck across the board, except for Coda, who has ruined everything. <laughs> <laughs> you said it so seriously with like <laughs> no hesitation. Oh my gosh. <laughs> except for Coda. <laughs> Sorry, Coda. Sorry, Coda. We don't we uh, don't we don't mean it. We kind of do, but like not no. real. All right, we do. We we, we... Hard Rock we, One Band. That's we don't. We, feel. we don't mean it, but like, just a little bit. You ruined everything. <laughs> 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 oh, that uh, Picking that warm up ruined everything. Honestly, that's what it was. It's not even. It's, I don't actually. Dakota picked that warm up. He is the captain. Maybe he very did ruin possibly. everything. Oh, honestly, that could be anyone. Um. The Pennsylvania bands make a whole lot of sense. The Hard Rock One band for Tennessee is a little surprising. Yeah, that's um, that's a weird one. They're really flying through the bands right now, actually. Wow, DT3, Hard Rock One, Free Mod 2. Immediate, immediate. I missed the first band, actually. They went so fast. What was the first band? Uh, DT3? first ban was the DT, uh, DT3. DT3, wait, no, DT3, free mod two. Oh, no mod. Wait, that's their pick. Wait, I feel like I'm missing one. Uh, hard rock, hard rock one, free mod two. Hard rock one, free mod two, and free mod one. Is that all the ones I'm missing? Is that what I'm getting? So it's uh, the, the DT3, um, from DT3. Pennsylvania, as well as the no, HD one, it was HD yeah. one. Huh. See now, now you've got me mixed up. Okay. I had the bands and now now I've forgotten the bands. <laughs> I know. This is what I'm here for. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so it is the HD one, but uh, don't forget both of these teams have played the pool already, so they have some information. The Nomad 5, of course, is gonna be the pick for uh Pennsylvania as uh Tennessee leaves it open and no hesitation. Interestingly enough, was banned out by Pennsylvania in their last match, but uh, they don't think Tennessee is as much of a reading team as the uh, last team they played. Yeah, they they uh, they went up against uh, Arizona. Arizona. That is definitely also not a reading team. I actually think Tennessee is more of a reading team than Arizona. Um, so I'm not entirely following it. I I don't like dislike this pick from Pennsylvania. Yep. I mean, I think it looks even better for them based on the fact that. Uh, Half the players on Tennessee can't do better than 70% accuracy. Yeah, this is definitely a rough part for Tennessee here. Not what they wanted. Coda finding some misreads as well as Sir. I mean, Thiryu is clearly the only player on Tennessee that has actually tracked this to this map. Um, you're finding a little bit of note lock there at the ending of the patterns, but I, this is just a Pennsylvania win. It is already beyond what I ever expected this to be a quarter of the way in. I, it is already a 300,000. And uh, no sweet tune apparently for uh, Tennessee. That's really going to hurt them. He was their main, uh, you know, hidden reading player. That's a big reading player. Uh, that is just... That is, that is rough. That is rough. Oh, uh, I have cleared up why we could not remember the third band, because, or the fourth band, because they there was not a fourth band. They lost the first band because they took two. Oh. So that, that would do it, yeah. Yeah, that's why we only saw three. Okay, I thought I was losing my mind. Uh, Sunwraith is uh, clearly the reading player of all time in this lobby right now. Uh, not that they need to be, uh, unfortunately, for Tennessee. They are not quite able to gain a foothold on this map so far. Uh, the current lowest score on Pennsylvania is Lolzep, soon to be Wenfris, if uh, 
Lol Zep holds the combo for much longer, and that score is higher than the entire team score of Tennessee. Uh, yeah, it is. Um, everybody is uh, one versus three um, for Pennsylvania. I mean, it is their pick, but Tennessee has played a fair bit of the, uh, the reading throughout this tournament, especially in the round of 16. And so uh, with that Spiku, and they've really far fallen apart on the reading pick. This is this is tough to commentate, honestly. Like this is actually very difficult to commentate what is happening right now because of like the sheer existential dread that we are witnessing on the side of Tennessee right now. Like this is this is unreal levels of like skill difference on this map. Uh, yeah, I mean, this has to be one of the lowest, possibly the lowest score of the weekend. I mean, I feel like everybody else, any other team who would get this kind of a score on the map just bans it out. Oh yeah, like Massachusetts, this is what would happen if we didn't ban this. <laughs> this is why you ban it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we probably have someone that can play this, but still, I like, I, this is the non-reading team score on yeah. this map. Uh, it is yeah. lower than the lowest score of Pennsylvania as a single player. And uh, that that is what happens when you uh, don't don't ban it, I guess. Yeah, this is uh, all right. Well, ten, I, you know, Tennessee. I, I I actually expected them to be like really, really like okay at that pick. Normally, Coda is like solid for reading stuff, and you know, not having Sweet Coon actually unfortunately puts them at a disadvantage to start. Which is uh, not not too good for them, but uh, you know, I, I kind of expected maybe a little more from them on that map. But Pennsylvania actually had quite the respectable team score overall. Yeah. Tennessee at the Hard Rock two pick. Uh, they got 1.4 million on this yesterday, so I guess they they don't think Pennsylvania can beat that score. Uh, should be seen. Uh, possibly lulls up in here of course, since he's already in the lobby. Magic, we're going to see Bunny in, as well as Danini. This is, you know, I... Who does Pennsylvania have? I need, I'm going to pull up their roster. Who does Pennsylvania have for a third for a hard rock pick here? Uh, Pennsylvania, third on hard rock. Third on hard rock? I mean, Pennsylvania is not really a hard rock team to me. Like, I think Bunny, like Money, can play hard rock pretty competently, but... This is precision aim. Bunny like money kind of strikes me more as the like consistency flow aim player. Yeah. Um, I mean, Bunny has been the fill for them uh, in the earlier rounds, and I think it has been uh, Sunray more often in uh, in this stage. And so they are just going to stick with Sunray. Players to watch out for this one. SRR, incredibly good at the Hard Rock. Uh, Danini as well. Very solid Hard Rock player there. And we should be getting to the map shortly. Of course, this will be your CS 6.5 pick. Uh, but pretty control focused. Oh, so we got Sunwraith in for Pennsylvania instead of Bunny Like Money. Uh, I, I, I am admittedly a little out of touch with uh, Sunwraith's hard rock precision ability, but this is the type of hard rock map that will very much be decided by this introduction section. We were kind of talking about this actually in our uh, team VC before the match where it's like, you, if you have a good hard rock team, you will have everyone hit the beginning and then it's a matter of how much of the ending you combo in most cases. If you are facing even a semi-competent hard rock team and you miss at all in this like introductory 500 combo ish, you are pretty much done on this pick. Yeah, I mean, especially true with the uh, spikier maps. We'll see. 
couple jumps coming out now. Some of the linear aim. Smaller than the ending linear aim, but it's it, it starts. And just really solid accuracy for Pennsylvania now, so they're going to be off to a very early lead. I did double check Sunwraith. Uh, had a really solid score on Hard Rock 3 yesterday. 400k actually, uh, getting just above Janini, so uh, certainly a very good hidden player, Hard Rock player for them as well. And no misses so far. Quarter of the way into the map now. And when we do see misses, it's going to be a very big swing. Well, this is, you know, kind of kind of the standard procedure for this map so far between these two teams. Uh, Pennsylvania definitely looking really good on this map, just based on the accuracy at the beginning alone. I mean, this is the easiest part of the map, accuracy-wise and combo-wise. And uh, to have this much of an act difference is definitely not desirable for Tennessee. Uh, but here comes the actual part of the map now. So this this is where we're going to separate the real hard rock players here. Uh, Sir is going to be big for Tennessee. He's been the hard rock player for them. So maybe we'll see something big. Danini and Zedico are going to trade out breaks and Sunwraith drops, but there is no drop from Coda or Sir to trade that one out. It is just Lulzep now into the ending of the map to hold for Pennsylvania. And Coda and Sir are just absolutely demolishing the ending here. Sir will be holding and Coda breaks. And that's going to be a point for Tennessee. Yeah, Lulzep breaks as well. And Sir with a very, very solid performance. Doesn't get the FC, but it's been more than enough. And it's all tied up one to one. Pennsylvania with the next pick. Wow. Good score from Sir, honestly. And the Hard Rock player for Tennessee continues to deliver. We have just seen some absolutely excellent play out of him every single match on the Hard Rock picks. Yeah, I and mean, Pennsylvania have not really liked to uh, go into Hard Rock too much this tournament in Tennessee. I mean, all it takes is two players with really good scores on uh, some of these maps. And uh, Zatok actually not far behind either on the 500k. That's a really solid supporting score. Yeah, that is that is, that is very good. Coda, Coda and Sir comboing through so much of that ending section really did wonders for them and you know that that pick kind of went how you know you just you you really expect it to like again you've got two very oh you know decent hard rock teams and they all combo through the beginning section and it comes down to you know who's feeling a little bit better on the the linear aim and today it seems like tennessee was lulzep tried to do whatever he could to hold off the combos there but uh danini and sunray finding breaks very very early into that ending section just didn't do them any favors yeah this is another kind of surprising pick to me uh for pennsylvania uh, both of these teams had very, very comparable scores on the map uh, in their last matches, 1.6 to 1.5 million. Uh, and so clearly Pennsylvania think they can do better on it or just haven't scared it. I, I mean, who can say? Yeah, you know, I, I do wonder if the nerves get to you at a certain point in that you know hard rock pick because if you practice that map and you know the ending is the only part of the map that you really need, to hit, you know, yeah, what what kind of toll does that take on your your nerves, especially on the precision pick? Yeah. Uh, looks like we have the Maryland-Georgia match finished. That ended in a 6-0 scoreline for Maryland. So uh, they will be the ones advancing to play Oregon. Yep, and that's going to be about 35 minutes from now. Right so, after uh... this match, yeah. Yeah, not much of a break for Maryland. We'll see if that's enough to uh, give Georgia some help here. Uh, we've got Astrovia in uh, for these faster pick. And no changes for Tennessee. This is not super surprising with Suicune um, out for this one. It does feel like it limits a lot of their roster options. Um, we'll, I think we are likely to see uh, Fair You in for a couple maps uh, later on, but uh, definitely not this one. I, I, I do wonder what the hidden flow aim on a pick here. And uh, something that surprises me actually for Pennsylvania is we have yet to see Bunny like Money, even for a tapping uh pick or like a you know a flow amy pick uh, like hidden two here so 
you know, you start to speculate, do they have him for this match? Or is he just not confident on maybe like the aim in this pick here? You got a really, really early break from Danini and Coda on both sides here. Danini's gonna need a little bit more with the act drop. Yep, and I mean, to your point, in previous matches, Bunny has been in for just about everything, so I'm very possibly not here. Sir is going to trade that back, though, as Sanini has recovered, smell out Pennsylvania to hold on to their lead early on here. Uh, but it's not going to matter too much until we get into the first KI section. These combos start to get a little bit bigger, and those ma misses matter all that much more. Well, not a lot of opportunities here uh, besides the aim sections and unfortunately Zedico is going to find a break on the introduction to this aim section here. This really is kind of like the hardest part of the map and this is where the majority of the aim is. It's going to catch Astrovia and Wenpris as well. Danini is now the only thing standing in between Coda and bringing this back to the side of Tennessee here. He has the backup combo from Sir as Wenpris continues to find breaks here. Yeah, and Sarah is just on a recovery combo. Nobody else on Pennsylvania to match. Even Zotaco is recovering a little bit. Of course, if we do see a miss from Coda on any of these sections, Danini could bring it back very, very quickly. Danini is dropping so much accuracy down to 94. Oh, there goes Danini. And with Coda holding, that's a massive 700 combo. There goes Astrovia now. U Empress on 200 is not going to put a little bit of a uh, dent in the Tennessee score. And they're just going to run away with this one. And this is looking like a break point for Tennessee. This is very, very much over here. Three massive combos going up against absolutely no response from Pennsylvania. Wenpris is their best player going up right now with 99.3, but it is not nearly enough to match up to the 2.4 million team score that Tennessee is able to throw down on this hidden two. And that is the first break point for this match. And quite early at that for the lower seeded team, Pennsylvania, from what I'm seeing in chat and from some uh, some things circulating around, may actually not have money like money today. And if that truly is the case, Pennsylvania is going to be fighting very, very hard to continue to maintain the mechanics through this match. Yeah, I mean, even in their match, uh, I think it was yesterday, Bunny was probably the strongest player on that team. So I think it's uh, all but confirmed at this point that Bunny is out. Um, you know, Suicune out as well, but I think it's a little bit more impactful for Pennsylvania as Bunny really has been that main carry on a lot of these picks. Well, you know, you, you don't like to see players like that missing. And, you know, we saw some reminiscence of this earlier actually with the match between um it was between florida and new york you know new york missing rhythm game and taquito while we cannot guarantee if it would have made a difference in who won that match it definitely contributed to the fact that florida was able to win that match six to two against new york who had five owed Maryland and Alabama in their first two matches, which is a very impressive scoreline against both of those teams to maintain that winner's record. So, you know, it, it clearly, you know, when you hit quarterfinals, we can missing those big players does matter a little. Yep, this is a really, really smart pick from Tennessee, by the way. The Hard Rock 3, uh, Pennsylvania, for one, did not look good on this uh, yesterday with 1.5 million, but funny was their top score on the map by about 100,000 points. Uh, so I imagine they're gonna bring in Danini as the uh, third player, but lols up in trying to replicate at the very least Bunny's score from yesterday. Not going to be easy. Oh, they're gonna have to bring something to this map here. Tennessee, you know, I understand this pick from them, especially if Sir is feeling good on the Hard Rock game today, but definitely a little bit more to be worried about on this pick compared to Hard Rock 2. You know, Hard Rock 2 is basically hit the beginning and hope you combo the ending as long as possible. Uh, but, you know, this map is pretty difficult all the way through here with these slider aim and a slider brick is possible anywhere, even for the best of the Hard Rock players in here. And... On the side of Tennessee, Sir is going to have to be that person to make the difference here. Lolzep looked really good on the Hard Rock, too, and maybe we'll see some repeat of that here, and it certainly is going to be to happen. Yeah, I, I mean, I think 
for Tennessee based on previous performances. If they could hold, you know, one combo past the halfway point of this map and not have everybody else completely fall apart, they're going to be in a really good spot. And as I say that, uh, they're starting to fall apart a little bit. Luckily, it's not the point in the map where it matters at all, but they're going to recover as Fury is just missing on nothing again and again right now. There goes Sunwraith on a set of the uh, fast slider jumps there too. While these misses won't really matter too much in the grand scheme of things for combo here, it is going to matter in the sense that the accuracy is now going to be down for both of those players for the remainder of the map, and they're going to have to spend the entire rest of the time recovering those, which is a big score deficit. Sunray finds one more break for Pennsylvania, but it doesn't matter too much as Sir and Fury you have both broken, so it's you know, two full combos lost compared to one, and now we're going to get into the action part. Yes, we are, and those combos on Zataco and Lolzep are starting to get really big. Those are going to be the keys through the first KI section. There goes Sir. Not... Oh, Sunray trades it back. That's a good trade for Pennsylvania, though, as they're still only on to two FCs. Fear you, not far behind, is going to keep things close for now. But there goes Zotaku. That's a big miss for Tennessee. Lots of map, lot to be played, but not traded back for Pennsylvania. There it is. There's the knee. There goes Lulz up, and now it's just Fear you holding. And Tennessee should be able to bring this right back. They're down by 100,000, though, so it's going to take some time. Fear you needs to hold for quite a bit longer. Danini and Sunray finding breaks there was not good for them. That's going to give Firyu another opportunity to continue to bring this in. There is no combo to combat this 550 on Firyu. It's going to take quite some time due to the accuracy on Firyu here, but as long as he holds this combo, this will absolutely go back to the side of Tennessee here. Firyu cannot afford to find a break. He's dropping 100s in lieu of keeping the combo, and it's working. The score is now going to flicker back over to the side of Tennessee, and Lalzip and Danini have no combo between them it's only 130 on Danini as long as it finds a slider break and fear you with 93% accuracy against all odds is holding the combo down for Tennessee not anymore hold on this just got interesting yeah fear you just has not been able to get through the slow sections whatsoever built up a 700 combo through the one of the hardest parts of the map and messes on nothing is classic uh, fear you on this map but it's a full combo reset for Pennsylvania so they're just their chance to make a comeback here is quickly going out the window as Sir is back on a really nice recovery combo. And Firyu and Zedeko and Sir all building the combo on this slow section exactly where they need to be. And Pennsylvania finding breaks here is just hurting their chances of being able to pull this back in the later stages of the map. Zedeko is going to find a break on that long slider here. And we're going to get into the final big aim section right now. Sir or Firyu need to hold this combo in order to maintain this for Tennessee. Danini is going to give them a little bit of help in Tennessee for reset or Pennsylvania for reset. Yep, and that reset I think is going to mark the end of this one. Fear you finds the miss, but Sir has not. That 700 combo is going to be more than enough to close this one out. And Tennessee are going to be up 3-1 to one now against Pennsylvania. In a very unexpected turn of events. The lower-seeded team has proven to be significantly more confident on their carry players in these maps. Tennessee, across every single pick so far, has had a massive score from at least one of their players. The one notable exception being... The Nomad 5, Sir stepping up to the plate on Hard Rock. It was Sir and Coda on the Hard Rock 2. And once again, Sir steps up on the Hard Rock 3. We've talked about the scores this player has been putting up across this tournament. And it continues all the way into the quarterfinals of the loser's bracket. Yeah, and it's tough for Pennsylvania because if you have Bunny, Bunny, uh, I feel pretty easily puts up, uh, you know, about 250k over Sunwraith. And all of a sudden, Pennsylvania are potentially taking this map by just a little bit. Uh, and it's tough for them. They do have the next pick, so they're going to look to keep things close. At least I don't think you can afford to give up another break point. That would probably spell disaster. They're going to go with the DT too. I do like them sticking with the DT. It has worked very, very well for them all tournament long. Uh, no reason to pivot now. Well, if you like it and it gives you confidence, you might as well run with it right now. Tennessee... In a pretty confident spot, though, you know, luckily for Pennsylvania, only one of those three points is a break point, which means that they can absolutely still bring themselves right back into this match, right back even if they win a break point within, uh, you know, the next pick or two from Tennessee here. But they do need to get one regardless. And, you know, you've got to wonder with Bunny missing. Bunny is a player that is, you know, basically perma-lobbied for Pennsylvania, which means that... 
you've got to expect Bunny's score to be at least, you know, like you said, maybe one to 200,000 score higher than the lowest score Pennsylvania's putting up here. And, you know, given the score differences for both of these teams uh, on these maps, the first pick coming out was, you know, the hidden pick, which was, or the Nomad 5 pick, which was a huge difference, but nice for what was a 238,000 score difference. Um, Larizia was, you know, a little bit bigger at 683,000, especially with that FC from Coda. But go down to make some noise. That's another 200,000 score pick right there. So there is at least, you know, one or two of these maps that could be contested potentially. Yeah, but Tennessee did ban this out yesterday against Oklahoma, who uh, doesn't feel like the, uh, you know, a speed speed team. So Tennessee is clearly uncomfortable on the pick. And, uh, you know, whenever team changes up their bans, it's usually not a bad idea to take their ban, make it a pick of your own, assuming you can play it to a decent level. That's what Pennsylvania are going to look to do as we have Danini in as the last player. Here you Coda, Tretico for Tennessee. Here we go. Into the old style DT pick here. I do wonder uh, which of these two teams this inherently favors uh you know tennessee has actually looked very good across the board um not too good on the nomad five which was a reading based pick and this is you know older styled uh, but pennsylvania is generally very good at the older maps so i expect them to be confident on this it's danini and fear you to find early breaks along with coda zedico uh, also you know dropping the combo so full reset for tennessee the bad part about that for tennessee is the accuracy simply does not exist on a single player for their team danini is right down with them but when is at least at 94 and lolzep's maintaining the combo with that as well I think this is the kind of map that Lulzep especially could look very, very good on. Well, within Lulzep's wheelhouse, it's very kind of old style. There goes the UN Purse, there goes Danini, but Lulzep still holds. Lulzep finds the miss, now it's cut on the recovery combo. Zedico as well. Uh, but it's going to take quite a bit of time for them to make a comeback here, so they're going to need to hold on to this combo, and we might need to see a few more misses out of Pennsylvania. There is a lot of map to go. So, there goes Zedico though. Coda can't do this by himself. He does have 95% accuracy, so it is technically uh, the best possible player that Tennessee could have a combo on right now is Coda purely based on the accuracy alone. That is where the most potential score lies for their team. But Fear You content, uh, continuing to find breaks here, being below 90% accuracy is not helping them out at all. Walzep is going to trade one of those breaks out. When person Danini can only do so much against Coda, but he does finally find a break as well as Furio and Zedico, which is a full reset for Tennessee, and Pennsylvania has now suddenly regained control of their pick. Yeah, and while Coda had a chance to run away with it, Pennsylvania has consistently had the higher supporting combos, and that's made the help and held under the score. They do find two misses into the chorus, but with the knees still holding that 300 combo, there's no combo on Tennessee to even start to not to come back as Sedico finds another miss. With a third of the map to go, we need Koda to FC the rest of the map here. Yeah, this needs to be a big performance from the star on Tennessee here. Unfortunately, it's another three-way reset on that linear aim section. A very smart pick out of Pennsylvania. They're going to be getting this one back, keeping the match within one point. They are far from out of it yet. I mean, down 3-1 to one doesn't feel great, but keep in mind, they are only down by one break point. It's not big, yeah, you know, it's it's not a whole lot of difference. They really just need one map, and winning their own pick is the start of, uh, you know, moving moving into winning one of Tennessee's, potentially. Yep, and it feels like they have a lot of good options left in the pool as well, so it uh, doesn't feel like they're at any risk of running out of picks for quite some time. Yeah, this is, you know, you got to wonder, does one of these teams end up running out of picks is the question, because, you know, Tennessee, they've been going really hard into the, the hard rock, no pun intended, but they really have been, you know, running those in and eventually you're going to run out of the hard rock pool and you're, you know, maybe not too confident on all of the gimmick picks against Pennsylvania, who is clearly able to play them. So, oh, there's no hard rocks left already. That's right. Hard rock one was banned out. So hard rock is completely gone already for Tennessee and they're three picks in so they've got to look elsewhere now uh, so far Pennsylvania has controlled the DT pool and they've looked better on the gimmick side of things so now the question is on this next pick for Tennessee where do they go how do they continue maintaining this strong performance that we've seen from them so far and not let Pennsylvania gain a big foothold 
it's hard to say. I, I feel like you've got to go towards um, possibly one of the no mods. I don't know. They're going to go for the free mod 4. Okay. This is respectable. I could see this as like... Um, if, you, if you've got players on... I, I want to say mods, because mods are the harder combination on this, that are really good at, like, the streamy kind of, like, flow aim consistency. Uh, this is a good pick for you. Uh, going up against Pennsylvania, especially if you know that Bunny Like Money is missing, that's huge, because this would be the type of map that Bunny Like Money would just FC for free, and he's missing. Yeah, and the, the big problem for Pennsylvania on this one is that Bunny has been taking Hard Rock on the free mods at pretty much every single time. Whereas on Tennessee, you know Sir is going to look really good on this. Uh, on Hard Rock has been really consistently putting up very impressive Hard Rock scores. And now Pennsylvania has to kind of throw someone to the wolves on the Hard Rock here because it doesn't feel like they really have a you know dedicated Hard Rock player um, outside of Bunny. Could very well see uh, Danini um, in for the Hard Rock. Might be Sunwraith as well. Possible. That's, um... I mean, Sunwraith has, has definitely had a little bit of trouble with the picks they've been in so far, but Sunwraith has also yet to play anything outside of the Hard Rock pool. I imagine Sunwraith is here to play Hard Rock. Oh, no, Sunwraith's the top score, uh, free uh, no more time. So... You know, good on the reading, but I imagine Sunwraith will be the Hard Rock potentially here. Uh, yes, so it is the Hard Rock on Sunwraith. They have played all the Hard Rock picks so far, so not too surprising. There, Lolzep is actually going to run with the easy. I absolutely love this. I love Lolzep. He is the best player of all time. If he puts up a good score on this, it's going to be huge. And he has already missed on this map, and now I am sad. I absolutely go to. You have to respect the easy pick automatically, Pennsylvania fans, and Sunwraith is on the over mod as well. Uh, has the hard rock, and I guess at that point, the hidden is just a comfort addition for Sunwraith, whereas we have no over modding. Uh, so the challenge now for Pennsylvania is can you hold on to your cons? Because if you can, you have a pretty decent multiplier advantage. Well, I guess that's kind of eliminated by the easy with that 1.75. And all stuff has not even held on to the combo uh, on this easy so far. If you're going to risk the easy, if you're going to take that lower multiplier, you really need to be putting up a really solid score on this pick because if you continue to find misses, your score is worth absolutely nothing. And you Empress has found a miss on the hidden. Now there's only uh, Sunwraith, the last player holding for Pennsylvania. Oh, that was a bunch of miss for Lulzep. It was, yeah. Honestly, and you know, I like Lulzep's theory on this. If you're not confident with the velocity of these streams and you can read easy, this is absolutely potential for you here because a lot of the difficulty with um, the density of you know, easy and the reading aspect of it is on these aim sections here. So as long as Lolzep can hold his reading on sections like this, he pretty much has a free pass through the stream section. So this is quite smart for Lolzep if he actually thinks that that is what the difference was going to be uh, between, you know, the sections for him. And he looks pretty okay so far on most of these aim sections here. Coda has found the only break for Tennessee, however, so regardless of what's happening with Lolzep on the left-hand side of your screen, we do need to see another break for Tennessee for Pennsylvania to really gain a hold into this match. And you look at the Hard Rock player, Sir finally finds a break despite holding a massive combo. I mean, this map is tiny circles. Yeah, the Lolzep has recovered really nicely, and this is one of the really nice things about the easy look at the accuracy for Lolzep. There goes the Empress, but Sitako trades it back. That's the one player you could not afford to have miss on Tennessee. And it is Lolzep on the easy who's going to run away with this one. I do stand correct. It is double the score for easy. So, um, really, Pennsylvania are going to be about 60,000 points ahead of Tennessee right now, despite the score. Sunwraith does find a miss. It's going to stop the beating a little bit, but they need somebody to match Lolzep. And unless we see a miss out of Lolzep, it's just not happening. Coda is trying to be that player right now and is certainly going to come close to doing so as he starts to push up a, a 600 combo here. Both of his teammates pushing 200 plus and it's just one for us to try and match one of those. They need Sunwraith to start comboing uh, again in order to match Sir and S there goes a break from Renfrist and Sunwraith as well. So once again, Lolzep is here with no help on the easy modification. Coda it has one teammate in Sir putting up a great performance on the Hard Rock right now. 
And if Sir outscores Sunraith here, it's going to be difficult for them. But there goes Coda, and now the only saving grace for Tennessee is gone. And Sir has to be the one to pick it up on easily the most difficult mod that you ever could possibly ask them to. Yeah, but I just don't know if there's enough time. Keep in mind, Pennsylvania is actually about 100,000 ahead of Tennessee right now. There's Mrs. from you, Empress, and Sunraith. There is Sir, but the other supporting combos have dropped off. They really need multiple supporting combos to try and match Lulzap. Oh, Lulzap dropping some hundreds there, but he holds. Yeah, and you can drop a lot of uh, hundreds on the easy. It is very easy to do, but it is very, very forgiving if you know how to read it properly. And it seems like Lulzap is very, very comfortable with the reading aspect of this pick. There goes Koda, sir. It's only Zataco left, and I think this is going to be a solidified point for Pennsylvania. The easy pick working out very, very well for them. Lulzep is my freaking hero. What is mm. this? Uh, I have been waiting for this moment all tournament long. This is absolute. No way he hits this pattern. Oh my god. Dude, Lulzep, you are not okay, man. Mm. What? He hits the, the hardest pattern in the map. Uh. This is nuts. This, this is, is so insane. This is the, the Lulzap supremacy. Oh my god. Lulzap is outscoring two members of Tennessee with easy. Before multiplier. Yeah. Ten Pennsylvania is actually... If, if Lulzap FCs to the ending of this, Pennsylvania may barely need the easy even to make the score go over to the other side. Zedico is actually the only player that is preventing uh, Pennsylvania from winning this without the multiplier right now. Lulzap's going to do, like, easy 430k here by the ending if he hits this stream. Actually, more, because that miss was actually so early. Oh, he oh, does no. miss the jumps at the ending again. That's what I said, the jumps are the hardest part of this map here. But Lulzap held through as long as he possibly could and puts up an absolutely demonic score here. I mean, think about it. This score is, is doubled, right? That yep. is... That <laughs> is 860,000 score for Lulzep on the easy modification. Effectively, 300,000 plus score higher than the next player in the lobby on Zetico's no mod. That is the performance that you just cannot beat. No, there's nothing you can do about that as, uh, as Tennessee. And uh, Tennessee, this was their pick, right? They were not expecting the Lulzep casual easy very near fc and uh it has come back to bite them you know I, I i like the thought process you know bunny's been the hard rock uh free mod player what are they gonna do without bunny uh well lols up easy is here <laughs> who needs hard rock when you just have lols up easy <laughs> has the solution thank you for subscribing oh my <laughs> gosh dude pennsylvania was like you know what we don't have Bunny. I'm going to pay for the, the like, upgraded plan or something like that. I, I just don't know what I just witnessed. I knew Lulzep was really good at easy. I've known Lulzep for a long time, and I knew he was good at easy. But, man, that surpassed even my expectations for someone like Lulzep. That was a performance to, to remember. I mean, even with you know, easy on that. Those streams are hard. There's a lot of velocity changes in those streams. So even though the jumps and the slider aim in that map is probably the hardest part with easy, being able to aim those consistently and not go too fast or too slow with your cursor control is another skill set in itself. Lulzip pretty much just represented like four different skill sets to us in one map. Yeah, that was a incredible performance. You know, we can talk about that for the, the rest of the match. Uh, this is why more tournaments need to have uh, 2x multipliers on the easy. It makes it actually viable on some maps. I, and I feel like if the multiplier is 1.75, you're potentially just handicapping your score. And a lot of players are turned off the easy uh, because of that multiplier. But a lot of maps makes sense with the 2x multiplier. It's going to be the hidden 3 pick. From Pennsylvania, this makes a lot of sense. Uh, Lolzap is very, very good at the hidden. So is you, Empress. I wonder how Suicune will fare on this map despite just getting home and not being entirely warmed up. Um, you know, this map is not inherently difficult with no warm-up in terms of tapping difficulty, obviously, but 
something that does worry me about Suicune, despite him being a very good reading player, is that this map is very aim heavy, and if you're not warm, um, your aim potentially a little bit of uncertainties there, maybe a little under aiming, over aiming going because your hand isn't used to moving quite yet. So I do worry just a little bit for Suicune because this map is so aim favored and not reading favored. But he's a very good reading player regardless, very good at these hidden maps. Yeah. Um, and I expect him to play well. Coda is also a good support for that, and Firyu has done well. It's up to Sunwraith and Lulzep to put up some big performances again, kind of like they did on that Nomad 5. Uh, you Empress as well, actually, all the way up there with the both of them. I think all three of them should be good at this, too, so contestant. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't Josie come back with no warm-up to play this exact map, or is it a different hidden pick? Um, she came back for... No, I, the first map she came back for was Nomad 1. I oh, think. I see. Okay. And then it was um, Hidden One. Okay. And the Hidden that's Okay, that's that makes sense. So, but yeah, like, you know, kind of the same principle, the Nomad 1 coming back in for an aim pick. Yep. This map, though, uh, doesn't have a whole lot going on uh, in the first quarter, which means all the accuracy here in the earlier sections matters quite a bit. This section as well, we have seen a couple of misses on this lower section that you really can't afford. The much faster section coming up uh, very, very early is where we're going to start to see a lot of misses. Players are going to start dropping like fries. Lols up the first drop, Suicune and Firyu trading it back. So two FCs to one for Pennsylvania through the first key eyes. Still a lot of key to go. And it's just the same players finding misses yet again. Coda, Sunwraith, and you Empress all hold through that first key eye. Well, the good news is for both of these teams, however, is that there's no silly misses happening right now. I mean, the breaks from Lulz Up, Suicune, and Fury really are coming on the difficult section of the map. Being able to aim that confidently, you know, it, it does take a, a certain level of skill. And, you know, when you're in a tournament setting, sometimes you get nervous, sometimes you miss aim, and it happens. And, you know, even though all three of those players are very good at reading, it is, you know, very aim-oriented pick, like, I, you know, we were saying, this is not the reading AR8 hit. This is aim. This is, can you keep track of your aim at a lower AR? This is not reading perfect stacks and crazy stuff. Sunwraith, however, is going to miss on the left-hand corner, which is actually going to give Tennessee a little bit of uh, a door opening here. Coda is still holding the FC with exceptional accuracy. And what is your Empress? Freak! Oh. What's up? If Koda holds... Oh no! Koda finds the miss, and I don't think they have enough time anymore. It's going to be close. There is still some map left, and it's only 50,000 points, but they need to find a lot of combo, and need to find it fast. If Pennsylvania has any matching combo, like Sunwraith has right now, they have no chance of coming back into this one. There's three misses, two of them for Tennessee, and that is going to be it. And Pennsylvania, for the first time, I think, is going to be ahead in this match. Man, what some unfortunate breaks from Tennessee, but Pennsylvania got to pull it out in the ending. Wow. And that was on uh, that was on their own pick, luckily. So, you know, they almost let up a break point there, actually. There was one point there where that almost looked like it uh, it could have been a Tennessee map. But, and, you know, and I would have I would have been very sad for Pennsylvania, you know, right after getting a break point, letting, uh, uh, you know, letting up another break point afterwards. That would have been absolutely crushing for them, I think. But you know, they maintained into the ending. They had a couple of breaks at the beginning, but Tennessee found breaks when they needed them to. Now they are in in a, a commanding spot, technically, because, you know, Tennessee wins their own pick here. If Pennsylvania is able to win their next pick, they do get match point first. And that is a confident spot to be in. It takes a little bit of the pressure off because, you know, then it means that you know, Pennsylvania has the confidence of not only tiebreaker guaranteed for them, but, you know, Tennessee has the pressure of picking a map that they think that they can 100% win, but they do have the advantage of also it being their pick. So there's advantages on both sides here coming into the last few maps being played here. Uh, yeah, and that's going to be uh, a three mod three pick. This... I don't think it's the pick for Tennessee. I mean, uh, Pennsylvania got 2 million on this yesterday uh, compared to the 2.5, or sorry, the 1.5 of Tennessee. Um, now, to be fair, it was funny on 560k, but Tanini FC this on the Nomad yesterday is going to look to do so again. 
Uh, and it's, I guess it's going to have to be a UN press taking the hard rock on this one because Sunwraith was on hidden. And yeah, yeah biggest question is if UN press can put up something close to Bunny's uh, 550k score yesterday. And we hope to see some improvements uh, for Tennessee's time around. They've got Zotaco in instead of Suicune, not overmodding this time around, so a little bit less risk for them. I mean, you know, you got to, you know, Pennsylvania with a 500,000 score lead over Tennessee on this map in their first playthrough. Even if Bunny Like Money put up 560k in that case, you know, if you even have the next best hard rock player on 350k and Tennessee gives the same performance, then you're still well in the clear for a win on these picks. And I, I just want to make a quick note, actually, of Sunwraith's aim. He is, like, making circles in between these larger jumps, and I actually think it is one of the most terrifying aim styles I have ever seen in my life. But he's, like, he's actually, he's, like, curving in between the notes. This is terrifying to watch. Yeah, and Sunwraith has also had incredible accuracy on just about every single map so far in this match. I feel like I look over at Sunwraith on every single eight map, and it's just, uh, you know, a high 99. No problems whatsoever. But things are going to be pretty even early on. We did see some early misses from Tennessee, but everybody's recovered and into the next game section. As we're going to see some misses, two for Pennsylvania, one for Tennessee, but that's going to be huge for Tennessee because Sir is on the supporting combo. They're going to start to bring this one back. Uh... Damn, I just received a screenshot of Sunwraith's aim, and uh, yeah, that is that is quite impressive. And you know what? I'm not going to knock it. He's the best player, you know, in the lobby right now, technically by virtue of accuracy on this hidden here. Uh, besting even the next best player with Amadi. Unfortunately, he's going to find a miss, though, and Tennessee is now going to drag a lot of score out of this. Sir is going to slow it down a little bit with the break, but Zedeko on the full combo now, the only full combo left is going to be able to make some serious moves for Tennessee here on their own pick. They really, really want to win this map. You do not want to be down a Pennsylvania pick and your own going into the ending of this match. And I absolutely love seeing this kind of adaptation from teams between matches. Zotaco was not even in for this map yesterday, and now is the highest combo in the lobby, is pushing Tennessee to cross the finish line. Has a quarter of the map to go, and if Zotaco can hold on for another 300 combo, it is a guaranteed point for Tennessee. Even has the supporting combos. There is some recovery for Pennsylvania, but things are very quickly getting out of hand. There goes you, Empress. Now it's only two recovery combos, and I think that might just be it. Yeah, I mean, you know, this isn't even the difference of Bunny Like Money on the Hard Rock. It really is just, unfortunately, you know, you're asking a lot of Danini and Sunwraith to repeat performances, or even Pennsylvania as a team, to be able to replicate that 2 million team score twice. It's a very, very respectable team score on a map like this. You are going to see the FC dropped on Zedeko on the side of Tennessee, which is going to open the door a little bit for Pennsylvania, but unfortunately, Sunwraith finds a slider break at the worst possible timing. Sir drops the combo as well well, but as long as Coda matches Danini right now, there is absolutely no moves that are going to happen here. The scoreline is so close, it's 50k, and Wenfris continues to break as well as Sunray Pennsylvania. Please hold some combos here, you're so close. It's only 60k between the two, but it's just Danini. He has no help right now. No, they needed the miss from Coda. There is technically still time if Coda finds the miss, but it's just not happening. Coda... It's too consistent into the ending on the hidden, and Akota nails that last stream. And uh, yeah, there's no time left. It's uh, nearly 100,000, and this last jump section doesn't have that much combo, but Akota hits it anyways. Enough, yeah. Wow, Tennessee pulls out their own pick. Good for them in close fashion, though. 75 ish thousand point difference. Yeah, I mean. This is the one where Bunny absolutely could have made the difference. I mean, can't assume that they would get the exact same score, but, you know, if you uh, plonk Bunny's score from uh, yesterday on the Hard Rock into this match, Pennsylvania get the point. But it is going to be Tennessee's point, of course, and we, it's going to be all tied up. We've got a best of three to end things off. Good fun. Pennsylvania, like you said, if they can win their own next pick, they're going to be on match point, which is very nice. But I think there's something to be said for having the last pick before tiebreaker, having that last win can build a little bit of confidence, get some momentum back. Well, 
Pennsylvania's in a, you know, they're in a, they're in a pretty okay spot right now. Both teams are in a pretty okay spot. You know, regardless of the pressure that exists when you're trying to force match point, um, you know, Pennsylvania has their own pick in order to try and get to match point. And, you know, that is more important than anything else I think you could possibly ask for here. And it looks like, you know, they didn't take too long for that pick as well, actually. They're pretty confident with that Nomad too. So the Do You Love Me pick coming out from the side of Pennsylvania here. And likewise, if Pennsylvania is able to win this own pick, Tennessee, while they're in a rough spot, having to win their pick to go to tiebreaker, they do have their own pick. So you have, you know, it's that weird middle ground you have between being nervous because you do have to win the map, but you're also slightly confident because you have some control over it. So it's like, it's like almost like the illusion of control. Like you partially do, but not really. Yeah, love to see Astrovia in for this one is really solid on, on these kinds of maps. Balls up as well. Always looks good on these picks. And we've got Dempsey in for trying to see first time this match. This is uh yeah, interesting roster switches for both of these teams. We're seeing players that we don't see quite as much that for you know the majority have picked in for both sides here. Uh, so, you know, a little a little bit of variation is always good to see. We did see Astrovia in for a map thus far, though. Uh, Dempsey is, of course, the, the newest addition, given that they haven't played a map so far. Astrovia was in for the Hidden 2. Put up some good accuracy, uh, actually, despite missing a couple of times. Uh, this map with Nomad 2 is very, very reminiscent to me of uh, something like Free Mod 1. Uh, with doubles and kind of like the aim control style um, with the tapping mixed in as well. So, you know, this map, I think the only difference is really that you have those like faster bursts mixed in, I think. Um, but Pennsylvania has been good at the gimmick stuff so far, and hopefully they can maintain that confidence in the gimmick here just for one more pick. That's all they need. Yep, I would certainly favor them slightly on the pick. Uh, no means heavy favorites, but I think they edge Tennessee out on this one. We'll see. Coda could also put up a very, very good score on this map very easily. I shouldn't say easily, but it is it is a possibility. <laughs> it's yeah. a better phrasing. <laughs> this is... You know, this map is is not inherently short either. Three minutes and 16 seconds for a pick like this does mean that you can see a couple of breaks from one of these teams and still not really have to worry about it too, too much into the ending of the pick here. You know, the misses really aren't going to matter until we hit about a quarter of the way through the map. And then that's when it's going to start to, you know, provide a little bit of a, a push towards either side. Dempsey finding an early break, however, uh, is less bad, but the 90% accuracy is definitely what's concerning. Yeah, luckily Danini is struggling a little. Oh, there goes Lalzep. That's a pretty big combo. Dempsey trades it back, but okay, there goes Gunpress. Tennessee are going to be more than happy with trading two combos for uh, Dempsey's low combo, and now it's two big FCs against only Danini, who is the lowest accuracy on Pennsylvania. Dempsey finds another miss, but right now Coda and Fury are going to be more than enough to bring Tennessee back into this one. Gunpress finds another miss. Dempsey's not making this easy right now, though. I mean, the score losses from these chain misses and the Ack is demolishing this. And unfortunately, the situation has now arisen that I was about to mention before, Fear You Missed. And it's that if one of the combo breaks on the side of Tennessee, this is really bad for them because Fear You and Dempsey both have really bad accuracy right now. Code is the number one at 97 right now, and he's being matched with an FC from Ganini. So Waldep and Wenfrist are going to be able to bring back a lot more score than you'd think, despite them only having about 500 combo between the two of them right now. They're already 50,000 to 60,000 score up, and we're barely past halfway. That being said, it is close enough that a break from either Benini or Coda will literally launch this to one side. Very quickly, there's a lot of combo to begin in this next KI section. It's very tricky. I expect we're going to see a lot of misses. Who is going to find the visit? Here's the question. There goes Lalzep. Big supporting combo down for Pennsylvania. Denise still holds us. They're going to be okay for now. Dempsey can find the misses. There goes the Empress. It is just Denini for Pennsylvania. Fear you. This is the Coda Denini battle right now. Neither of them finding misses so far. How are they doing it? Oh my Surely God. one of them has to miss. 
please, please. I then you need to find the miss. Can Kona do it? Is th there should be enough time. There is. Oh no! Kona finds find the miss as well. It's a full reset across the board, and that full reset is going to favor Pennsylvania massively. They have the score advantage, and with the accuracy team so low on Tennessee, there's just no combo left to make the comeback here. I mean, Coda actually did enough there too. Coda has a 50,000 score lead over Danini based on that accuracy. But the thing that's absolutely demolishing Tennessee right now is Dempsey only being at 115,000 score. He is 180,000 behind the lowest player and 180,000 score would have won Tennessee the map. Oh no. I mean, I get, you know what? I'm not gonna say oh no, because that was Pennsylvania's pick. So technically that did go how it was supposed to. This is now Tennessee's opportunity to get to match point here. Pennsylvania is in the comfortable spot that we talked about. Yeah, this is not necessarily one uh, that uh, Tennessee expected to win. Of course, it was Pennsylvania's pick, but potentially I may feel like a bit of a missed opportunity there to uh, bring themselves to match point instead. Uh, but these teams so far have been picking, picking very quickly. Have not given us a lot of time to uh, speculate a bit the picks, but we do have some time now. What is the last pick for Tennessee here? I, uh, you know what, Tennessee, they've they've got to go in for maybe maybe they go. Do they? What were the bands? What were the bands again? Was Fremont one uh, in the bands? Do they have Gorilla Step? Oh, you're out of time, Chillier. It's DT4. Oh, they went. Totem Bloom. Well, finger control into stamina. Again. Yeah, this is, uh, yet again, big risk for Tennessee. This has been the case for a few maps, uh, but Pennsylvania, again, 2.4 million on this yesterday, 2.1 for Tennessee. So we need to see worse scores from Pennsylvania, or better scores from Tennessee, and Tennessee betting on one of those two things happening. One of two. They've got the most wiggle room here, though, and you know, that's kind of the important thing that we we have to take a look at right now is that Pennsylvania has options here. You know, they A, try and win this pick, or B, they play tiebreaker, and you know, both of those, that gives Pennsylvania two chances to win this match. Tennessee... They, you know, they really only have one chance, and it's this map right here. It's like an and if or. I've, I've just looked back at the scores for both teams, and it was funny like money on the 1.169 million for Pennsylvania. So, uh, now that being said, UN first was on a one slider break. Astrovia was on a one miss. So, both Astrovia and UN Press could put up some very, very big scores here and I could easily see them, uh, I mean, honestly, it could go either way. I could see them getting worse scores, or I could see them popping off and getting 800k uh, with a little bit better luck on the pick. Really depends how they're feeling. This one is terrifying for Tennessee. They've got Coda, SRR, and Fear You. It was a much, a little bit more balanced performance. Every player on the uh, Tennessee team getting uh, above 600k except for Fear You. Just below, it was Sir on a 900k, Coda on a 700k. They're going to look for repeats. We're going to see some very high combos, very high scores from everybody in this lobby. This is all about the consistency right now. A lot of this map is going to ride on hitting this beginning section of the map, right? Because once you make it to that stamina section, it's really just about how well you can even mash through those streams because they're so dense. Even if you can't tap those confidently, you can still put up a combo. So right now, it's going to be about these early misses, this early finger control here. And both of these teams have the capacity to do that. We'll see what these longer bursts have in store, at least, for how comfortable these players are on it. But... You know, again, this is very similar to Hard Rock 2. A lot rides in the beginning, and when Chris finding a very early break is not what Pennsylvania needs right now. They cannot afford drops to these early combos. That's 300 combo missing now from Pennsylvania, which is well into 100 to 200,000 score as we get to the ending of the map already. Yeah, but once again, it's Pennsylvania with the significantly better accuracy, and despite the drop from UM, Chris, they're going to be holding oh, on, crazy. and it's Astrovia. It's two FCs to one, and that's course. Oh, it's gonna be Fury you finding the drop. Now it's Coda versus Lolzap. I don't. I don't know which of these two players is actually stronger on stamina. Unironically, Lolzap is 
kind of a stream player. Uh, high BPM leaves something to be desired sometimes, but Lulzip does play streams quite frequently. Coda does actually have a tendency as well, funny enough. So both of these players are like very often regarded as like reading favored, but both of them play streams. So yeah, I don't actually know who holds through this ending. It's 213, very comfortable. I mean, Coda, we have seen hold through the ending. Got Intra K just last time. Lulzep untested, and Lulzep finds the miss, then the slider. Oh no, Coda needs to. Oh my oh, god, he Coda didn't you. There's miss no out of nothing. There's, There's a no concern Fear You, though, on recovery. As UN person now has the highest combo in the lobby with Destravia a little bit far behind Fear You and SRR. It's actually going to be pretty even right now. It is purely the accuracy from Pennsylvania keeping them in the lead right now. Any misses are going to be massive and could no swing the camera lead. lead. Yeah, this, this is, is where happening. This is where everything falls apart for one team. Who will it be? We need to see one of these big combos drop. We actually generally see less misses on the stream section and more on the aim section after it lost up chain misses. Oh, this is bad for Pennsylvania now. They cannot afford a single break. Sir is now on a 1,000 combo. Fear you on 800 and Coda bringing up the 400 combo here. This will go back to the side of Tennessee unless we see a major break. Tennessee cannot afford a big break here. Any miss from them will halt this score game. They must bring it back before they yeah. break. This ending section with the aim, we've seen misses before. Lost it's that from from miss. It's gonna go back over. Hold on. Fear oh, the Fury change it back. Oh my god, Fury, you chain missed. I to be at the end. Spin to win. Spin to win. There's not enough spinner in Pennsylvania wins. It's seven to five. Wow, right at the ending too, there was all the opportunity in the world. Tennessee had it there and there was a chain miss at the ending and it gives it away in a total of 27,000 score. And that gives Pennsylvania the win over Tennessee in this loser's bracket match. Unfortunately, that means that we will have to bid farewell to Tennessee in the United States Cup 2023. They are out in loser's bracket round three. They put up an excellent fight against the 10th seeded uh, Pennsylvania. But now Pennsylvania will be moving on to the next round of the loser's bracket. They will be he in the next weekend semifinals. They will be playing the loser of Virginia versus New Jersey, which will unfortunately not be decided until very late tomorrow night.